For BMW, the 7 Series is the car that embodies everything that they're capable of in terms of technology, design, engineering, you name it. But I think for this one, everyone got the memo apart from the design team because just look at that grille. <laughs> it's ridiculous. But you know what? It adds to the presence of what this car is all about. It's luxury, it's comfort, it's technology on wheels. Let's take a look. Starting with the front of the car, we have dual LED lights uh, kind of situation here, which looks really good. You can also pay for extra Swarovski headlights as well, which bounces off the lights, makes it look a lot more fancier than this. And then we'll look at the front grille here. It's got active uh, front grille, which is nice as well. Good for aerodynamics. This has got 0.24 co uh, drag coefficient in numbers, which is not as good as the EQS, uh, but still good enough considering the shape of the car and the way it's just so flat at the front. And then moving on, we also have this LED lights that goes around the front grille. You might not be able to see it right now because it's daylight, but at night time, you'll be able to see that in your head mirror if you've got one of these behind you. And then moving on to the side further down here, we have the side curtains here, which allows to direct air in the right way to allow for more efficiency. Uh, so it's got it on both sides. So one that side, one that side. But I think all in all, this front, it has a lot of presence, but it doesn't look that good. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Over to the side of the car, this is a car that's about 5.4 meters long. It's a very long car. In fact, if I was to do this, I'm still going. <laughs> I'm still going. This is a very, very long car. But the side of the car is not that interesting. There's nothing really going on here. It's very boring. It's just a long straight car and it's nothing to see. Let's go over to the back. Over on the back, things look very minimalist, including the tail lights. You've got the X-Drive 60 logo on there, BMW badge with the camera there for reverse camera, the i7 logo uh, on the back there. There's no exhaust uh, gap or anything like that. Obviously, it's an electric car, uh, but it looks really nice. And then you've got this button that just sits flush to open the boot. And here we have 500 litres of boot space. You can't fold the rear seats down at all, so this is all you get, but you get a big, opening so you can easily put things in there not worry about getting them in or anything like that you can also pay extra for kick format so you can use your your foot to get in the, in the in the boot if you have hands full of things and buttons there to close and lock the car if you want to do so but uh, that's basically it i think as far as design goes on the exterior of the car it's very straightforward and simple but i think on the inside though is where the magic happens let's check it out Oh, before I forget, on this side is where your charging point is. So you can easily get in there AC DC charge. This can support up to 195 kilowatts uh, fast charge. So you can charge this up very quickly. Before we get in the back seat to show you the seat, actually, one thing that's worth mentioning is this one doesn't have it, but you can also get extras where you can have a fingerprint reader on there to get in the car. You can also have one where we have to just press and hold and stuff like that and the door will open itself. You can also use the app. Uh, with that extra to control the door so that all the doors open by themselves to get in the car which makes it a bit more of a chauffeur, uh, chauffeuring car if I'm saying that right but uh, this one doesn't have it but we do have a simple way of just getting in the car and see what it's all about. Whew, this feels nice, it feels really nice in here, the material used on the seat feels really nice, I love the single slab of seat as well. Unfortunately, because this is actually built to accommodate for also uh, ICE cars as well, you have a big transmission tunnel here, which is a shame. It just means that if anyone happens to sit in the middle, they're gonna have to raise their knees <laughs> quite high up or just obviously put their feet on both sides. But I doubt people that buy this car would have people sitting in the middle. Uh, but that aside, we have a few things here to talk about, which uh, some are exciting, some aren't. <laughs> Um, the exciting bit is the screen that we've got here. It's a 31 inch 8K screen, which I'll show you guys in a minute. But before that, we have armrest there with a little area here that can go up. We've got two USB-C ports here. And then you can push this button here to reveal the cup holders. So you can put your cup holders there. You can also pay in some cases to have wireless charging here as well as an extra. Um, this suede sort of material here, this would get funny over time. Not a big fan of that. Takes away from that premium look that this has got so far. And then you can close that back up, push that back in, and this middle bit kind of sticks out as well. So again, if you were to be sitting in the middle, that's gonna be an issue uh, for a long period of time. But again, are you ever gonna sit someone in the middle in the car like this? That's debatable. Um, here, there's nothing here, just a tiny little gap there to maybe put your phone or something. You can control your ventilation here on the back as well. All this feels a bit cheap 
for such a, a premium car. Perhaps if you paid extra for all the extra bits that you can get in this, it might be different. But yeah, one thing that's missing in here is that business lounge aspect of this. So this seat, unfortunately, doesn't go all the way up, that folding down and, you know, do the whole business lounge vibe here. You have to pay extra for that. You do get Bowser Wilkin sound system in here, but not, as far as I'm aware, this is, this doesn't have the full uh, diamond surround sound, which is a lot more powerful than the one that I've got in here. So this one sounds okay. It's not, it's not the best I've heard. I've heard the other version. If you check my Instagram, we actually went to Bowser Wilkins uh, to try that out. And that was much better than this. But anyway, I digress. There's a little screen on here on either side for the passengers. So you're gonna have to fight over certain things in terms of settings and stuff like that. So we can go to my modes, which then gives you option for theater, relax, expressive, digital arts and personal. If you press theater, the screen comes down, all the blinds will go up. So everything gets a bit darker in here and just a bit more cozy. I've uh, got blinds. So here we can open everything. We can close everything or individually we can select them as well. So I can tap to open that one, tap to open and close that, tap to open and close that as well. We'll close all of them if you wish to do so. We have lighting as well. So we can change the, the brightness here for reading lights and stuff. We can change ambient lighting uh, in here. So we can turn that on and off. As you can see, we can change the brightness and uh, very straightforward and simple and climate control is always there to change your comfort level like heated seats and all that all that stuff here we've also got a sound settings up top so here we can change turn the sound on and off we can go to sound settings even on here so we can do the logic 7 surround sound so we can change the intensity the bass levels and all that stuff so you basically have all the autonomy back here to be able to control the theater experience the sound experience your comfort levels and just the general mood in the back there's a little button here to open the car door. And this button usually, as standard on here, would just open the door. But you can also up to have an extra where you can press and hold it and the door would actually open itself for you. So you don't have to do any, any work in terms of opening and closing the door. Yeah, first of all problems. I know a lot of people like this being here, but actually I think this is not the right place to have it. I would have preferred to have a detachable screen here like you would in a Bentley or the Audis where you can detach the screen and have a tablet in hand where you can control things in here. But that being there is just, I don't know, I'm not a big fan of it, but it's there. Besides that, I think you have plenty of knee room, head room, leg room, toes, feet room, you name it. <laughs> There's plenty of space in here and that's what this is all about. I know the seats are forward before someone mentions anything, uh, but if you put the seat back into normal seating position, there's still plenty of knee room, leg room, all the rooms that you need in here to be comfortable as much as you want to be. The star of the show at the back though is this 31 inch display, which is also 8K resolution, which is incredible. I don't think we've seen something like this in many cars or any car at all. So if you guys know of any other cars that have it, let us know in the comments below. This has different connectivity behind it as well. So you can connect your HDMI cable, um, although trying to work from your laptop connected to this can be a bit slower. So it has a bit of a lag between the laptop itself and that. I know this because I tried it already and that was my experience of that. But that aside though, you do have different uh, streaming services on here. And on the touch panel that we've got on the side here, we have different things that you can do. So for example, we'll be able to fold this down here. Takes a couple of seconds or so, four or five seconds, something like that. And we've got a theater display on the back here with this nice animation. You can sign in using your uh, Amazon account so you can then stream Amazon Prime for example uh, you can change inputs as well so you can change the Fire TV or HDMI like I was saying you can use different streaming services on here uh, also you can change the tilt angle like so so you can go up and down you can even move it as well towards you so we can tap this to make the screen come a bit closer to us or we can tap this to make the screen go further back so it gives you a bit of a versatility in terms of what you can do with that which is really nice. You've got touch communication here as well, uh, which means you can control different settings on this. Uh, we can zoom as well. So we can change the aspect ratio. We have 16 by nine, 21 by nine, and 32 by nine to get the full width of the, of the system there. So look, it just expands and goes all the way. You can change brightness levels. Like I said, you can tilt it and bring it towards you and back as well. Up front, things are still exciting, just as it is at the back as well. I think probably even more exciting up here. Um, we have, a bunch of different mix and match of design language all around here. We have the wraparound display that's really big. You can modify things that goes on there. We have head up display, which is nice and bright and sharp. You can adjust uh, up and down the, you know, the leveling and stuff. We have 
an electronically controlled steering wheel column here. We've got flat bottom here for easy entry to get inside and outside of the car. To control the seats, we have the control on the side with this nice crystal sort of glass finishing that's been cut into this crystal effect. We have the same sort of design around this rotary dial here. And also we have the sort of same design, all this diamond cut design all around this area as well, which is also touch display. We've sort of like hidden away all the ventilation um, here, so you can't really see them, but they are there. And you just have a couple of control here to control the directions, yeah, the manual control. But otherwise, here we have buttons to control the intensity. We even have an electronically controlled parcel bit there. So you press that button, that opens up. It doesn't close the back up for you though, which is strange. Uh, so you have to close the back up yourself. I know, hard work. Um, and then on here, we have some control for, you know, start, stop, your gear shift, it's got B mode as well. We've got hold auto hold. This is also interactive as well. So if you press the as of light, for example, you can see the whole thing blinking. Or if you have like emergency braking or anything like that, it will also interact with what you're actually doing as well, which is pretty cool. There's not a lot of control on the steering wheel, which is really good actually, it's not overwhelming. So we have simple control for your cruise control and speed limiter. We have your media control on this side and settings so you can choose what goes, what content goes on here and how it looks and your head up display settings are there as well. Very straightforward, two cup holders here. You can't cover the whole thing, but you can cover the individual cup holders. So it kind of just slides into place. We have a wireless charging mat down here. And then underneath here, we have two USB-C ports also. One thing that's strange so far is I can't seem to be able to connect my phones to the car. I keep saying it's not compatible and Bluetooth can't seem to find my devices and I can't seem to find the car itself. I don't know if it's some sort of like limit that they've added to the loan car, because this is a loan car, it's not my car. But other than that, the seats are nice, they're nice and comfortable and generally just really comfortable in here. And you've got that massive panoramic sunroof, which allows to have extra feel for space in here. It feels like it's spacious, more space than you actually have in here, which is really good. Like I was saying, this is a very bright, sharp, high resolution display, which is one of the best you find in any car. So the, the rotary dial in the middle here can go left and right, it can go up and down and stuff like that. So on the main screen, you have different widgets, which you can add your own as well. So if you're not happy with what's on there, you can change the widgets accordingly. Uh, you can see your car there as well. So at the moment, you can see that we're doing 2.7 miles per kilo hour, which is not the most efficient, uh, but it is a 2.7 ton car, so you can imagine. You see your traffic conditions and all that kind of stuff. And it's also got BMW's personal assistant. And what's also cool here is you can do hand gestures as well. So for example, if you play music, you can easily do this. Like you can see there, that will allow you to change track, for example, or if the music was playing, you can also do that too. And then let's go into all applications. So we can see everything that's available. Like I said, this is very easy to use. So if you don't want to see all these applications, that's a lot. It can be overwhelming to see all of these. Uh, you can also just go infotainment applications only, which means you can look at your Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Spotify. Like I said, you can log into Spotify directly on here now, because uh, providing you've got a data uh, allowance. And then you've got Alexa built in as well, so you can control things from home. You've got your theater screen options here as well. You can even play YouTube whilst you're charging your car. And then you can go into vehicle apps. So this will give you the more like the system application. So like mobile devices, adding new devices, your charging options, seat comfort and things like that. So we can even go into live vehicle here so we can see all the information that we need for your consumption and stuff like that. So one thing that they don't really show you on here is you can actually swipe to go back as well like you would on some of your smartphones, but it doesn't clearly state that you can do that on here. So you might struggle with that first, but once you figure that out, it's very straightforward. We have parking here as well. So with parking, you can do, uh, you can see your camera there. So you can see everything that's around you, you know, you can see all, all around there in 3D sort of effect as well, which is pretty cool. You can also see back and forwards, sides, front of the car. You've also got uh, assist view, you can turn it off, panorama view, so you can see the whole thing. And we've also got this 3D view where you can do this, look at this. Pretty, pretty cool, right? <laughs> I don't know if you do this all the time because by the time you do all this, you might as well get out the car and uh, have a look at where you're parking. But this can also allow you to park as well uh, by itself. So you've got assisted parking. I don't think that's actually part of the pack in this particular version, uh, but you can do assisted parking. So it will start to search for parking space and help you park comfortably well with less turning, uh, with less maneuvers uh, rather. Uh, you've got car wash view, so you can see what's happening as you're washing your car, 
which is pretty cool. I don't see that that often in cars. Uh, got all the all the parking assist as well, so cross traffic warning, parking distance control, and all the usual stuff, GPS based stuff you can do as well. We can go back to home, see that, see all our, the rest of the settings available. So we can go into driver setting, see the driver assistance options available here. So we got uh, uh, feedback warning on the steering. You can go driving options as well, speed limit assist, parking stuff as well that we go through, went through already. Uh, safety and warning, this is where all the safety options are. So you have lane departure warning, lane change uh, warning as well, exit warning, alertive, uh, sorry, attentiveness assistant, speed warning and stuff like that. So you got all the safety stuff there to keep you nice and secure and safe on the road. Uh, you got options as well for driver and, uh, driving and drivetrain and chassis. So you can have the sound, the fake sound that comes <laughs> basically when you uh, press the accelerator, especially in sports mode. Uh, you can change all that noise if you want to or just not have it at all. I'm glad they, they give you the option to turn it on and off though. Uh, but besides that, it's just a matter of playing around with the whole system in terms of like interior lighting, your seat comfort and different modes that you can have on here. So like I was saying, if you go to my mode, you have personal, sports, efficient, expressive, relax, theater, digital art. Uh, so you have different options there that you can do, or you can do personal, do your own and change different settings. But like I said, it's very intuitive, very, very responsive. There's no problems there at all. You can even search for options as well. You have digital key, which means you can share keys with your partner using your smartphone. That's pretty cool as well. It just keeps things nice and fluid um, or versatile for people with multiple use in the house, uh, multiple users in the house. Personal hotspots there as well and so on and so forth. We can sit here all day and talk about everything that's in here, but yeah, play about with it if you get a chance to. The instrument cluster shows all the regular information like the range, the battery percentage on that side, but we can also adjust this to, to, to suit different modes. So first thing first actually is when we change from uh, my mode here, so if you go to efficient, that will change the sort of characteristics that you get. Uh, if I go to expressive, that changes as well to sort of different sort of styling, as you can see there. One thing that's cool here though, is if we press these settings here, we can change the content that's showing on here. So we've got from reduced to journey data, we can have uh, range prediction on there as well, and so on and so forth, or map information. We can also go across and change our head-up display settings, which I know you guys can't see right now, but that allows you to remove things and add different information that goes on the head-up display. But other than that, it's very simple, very minimalist, sharp, high-resolution display that allows you to see all the important information that you need to see as you're driving. Right, let's get this on the road and see what the drive, talk about the drive rather than see what it's like, because I've had this for a while now and uh, I can tell you a few things about it. Whilst I'm coming out of this car park, actually, one thing I've noticed is whilst I like the crystal um, diamond cut kind of style of the rotary dial that we've got here, what happens is when the sun's shining and it bounces off this, it's almost blinding sometimes, um, which can be annoying. Uh, it's just a minor thing there. It's not a big deal, but just something to note. And also, once the display goes down on the back, so if you're driving a passenger and you want to use that big display on the back, you can't see it behind you. So that's when a digital head mirror would have been nice to have. But uh, again, minor, but just a couple of things I thought I'd point out whilst we get ourselves on the road. One of the good things about this car though, um, is how quiet it is. It's very comfortable, which is no surprise at all. BMW are good at this kind of stuff. It's very quiet. You go over speed bumps like that, the air suspension just handles it very well. And the only noise you can hear really is those 20 inch tires on the outside. And when the wind starts to hit the mirror on the motorway, you can hear those two noises. But again, it's not overly loud, but it's there. So it's something to note uh, when it comes to, you know, the, the silence, the the feel of how you are in the car and just the ambience. This, I mean, this is a, it's an electric car, so you want it to be nice and quiet, but those two things are what you'd get. You also get that fake exhaust noise as well, if engine noise or whatever, uh, if you turn them on. But if you turn it off, it's honestly so quiet with those double glazed windows, which is perfect. Anyway, let's talk some stats, which I know some of you guys would be interested in. This will do zero to 62 in 4.7 seconds. It has 101.7 kilowatt hour battery in there. It's got dual motors uh, and this is all wheel drive. So really good around corners and stuff like that. There's no issues there at all. Top speed, you're looking at 149 miles per hour and 745 Newton meters of torque. And as this is electric, uh, you feel that uh, torque straight away, which is really nice when you put your foot down in this car. Uh, if you notice it's a 2.7 tons uh, of car, it's, it's, it's a very heavy car. You still feel the speed and uh, it feels faster than the numbers uh, suggest, which is really good. So if you just want to cruise and have a chilled drive, you can do that in this. 
and when the opportunity arises where you need to put your foot down and just go, you can also do that with heat, with ease, with no problem at all. And I think the passengers all around the car will feel nice and comfortable. They don't feel stressed uh, when it comes to that at all. But back to the driving though, um, we're driving around countryside around here, just uh, doing all these bends and all that stuff. It just feels really nice. The steering feels very precise. It's not too soft, which is something I was worried about. One thing as well is when you put this, when you change one of the modes and you put it into sport mode, the seat bolsters, they're kind of folding to hold you in as well, which is a nice little extra touch for such a car that's not actually meant to be a sports car. So it's not meant to be the car that you expect that sort of effect from. This is available in Excellence, Excellence Pro. There's also the M uh, trim levels as well. And there's loads of different options that you can spec this up. I think this starts from just above 100,000 pounds and you can then go up and spec it up to wherever you want. This can go upwards of 200,000 pounds actually. You might start to think this is actually a car that you, you get driven in rather than one you drive, but actually it's a bit of both. Uh, it's excellent for when you've been driven and it's also excellent from when you're driving it as well. It just handles the road very well. Um, whether you go over speed bumps, you go over smooth, comfortable roads, it just feels really nice. So I can't really fault it. I can't say anything bad about it, but you know what though? This is a nice quiet road and it's national speed limit. So what we're gonna do is put this in sport mode and just put our foot down. Ooh, side bolsters are on, okay. Videographers at the back, Kalik, how you feeling? All right, let's, you ready? <laughs> I mean, I have no way, no means of testing that in this car, but if they said I was 4.7 seconds, I believe them because that felt great. <laughs> how did that feel, man? Yeah, there you go. It feels great. You said it feels nuts. <laughs> but yeah, this feels great. Comfortability, great. Uh, range, we were getting around 2.8 or so um, miles per kilowatt hour which is not the most efficient I've seen um, compared to like the Mercedes, for example, in terms of range. Uh, now, BMW quote that we'll be able to get up to, I think around 388 miles on the WLTP. Don't quote me, we'll put numbers on the screen. Uh, but I don't think you'd be getting that in this. I think once you start messing around with your driver's style, the weather, all that kind of stuff, I think you probably will be getting comfortably well in this 270 miles, 280 miles-ish, um, which is not bad at all. I think that's still pretty good. Um, and you've got fast charge as well, 195, um, kilowatt charging compatibility, which means you'll be able to charge this up very quickly and you can get on the road again, top it up as you stop for coffee, uh, top it up again and off you go. But I think overall, I love it, it feels comfortable, but if I was to get one of these, I'd need to get it with a full, full whack, full spec, you know, business lounge in the back, all the tech that I can get in the car, massage, everything, I'd spec it up and spend that full whack of a hundred and, I mean, around 200 grand and get that thousand walking speaker, the full diamond sound, uh, surround sound in there, I'd get all that in there as well. But as always, let me know what you think. Over to you, drop a comment below. If you have any questions, uh, drop them there as well. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys uh, in the next video.